The A4988 can control bipolar stepper motors in either full, half, quarter, eighth, or even sixteenth step modes. It can handle both 3.3 volt as well as 5 volt logic, so it's compatible with Arduino and ESP boards, and it can drive motors with up to 35 volts and up to 2 amps. These boards are usually sold with little aluminum heat sinks that are to go right directly on the IC but it's not the end of the world if you don't have one as long as you're using it for a low load operation. The board also has this little screw potentiometer on it, which can be used to limit the current that the IC drives. What happens very commonly with boards that are intended for use in prototyping is that one layout from the IC datasheet's typical circuit application will become the market dominant, and many companies will create boards that are nearly identical. Despite this, however, some of them have slightly different pinouts, so it's important to find this either digitally from the seller or, preferably, on the board itself. This is especially important because while the application circuit may be almost identical, there's no guarantee for the pinout. So you may be looking at a diagram and wiring it in the positions according to the diagram that is different from the pinout of your actual board, or you could be plugging it into one of these stepper motor shields that you can plug into an Arduino, and the shield is expecting the pins to be in a different order than they actually are. After you find the pinout for your board, you can see how similar it is to the pinout for my board and reference this little infographic that I made for you so that you know what each pin does. I have a couple comments on these though. It's fairly common that you're going to have two circuits. You're going to have a power supply that's going to give you a heavier voltage to power your motors, as well as you might have your Arduino plugged into your computer's USB or a, a 5 volt board or something like that. Whenever you're working with two circuits in the same application like this, you have to make sure that you tie the grounds together somehow, otherwise it's not going to act the way that you expect or it may not work at all. For the VMOT pin, I see a lot of sources online saying that you have to have 8 to 35 volts, but on the datasheet for the A4988 IC, it actually says between negative 2 to 35 volts is the rated range. So I don't think it's actually true that you have to have at least 8 volts. Again, make sure you pay attention to the fact that while the driver can handle up to 35 volts, there's no guarantee that your motor will be able to, so make sure you check with your motor specifications as well. Lastly, RST, the reset pin, is what's called a floating pin, which means that it has no default high or low value. So you're going to need to tie it to a low value to make sure that the driver works at all. I recommend just getting some of these header pin ties and then tying the reset and the sleep pin together. Because reset is floating but sleep is default low, this will bring reset to low as well. Okay, and lastly I've also included a little Arduino sketch just for you to test your sanity with uh, with some code here that I wrote for you. You're obviously going to want to change these three first lines here, your direction pin, your step pin, and your steps per revolution. Your steps per revolution, you're going to need to change. The default for a, a NEMA 17 stepper motor is going to be 200, but if you're doing half step, you need to do 400, quarter step 800, obviously, so on. Okay, all of these are being declared as outputs. That's pretty obvious. Now, this little function here, you should probably put this in a, in a subroutine just to make the coding a little bit easier for yourself. But you'll notice that we're using delay microseconds here, and that's because that the, the delay that you use in between steps is actually less than one millisecond. So we're going to be using microseconds. I've actually found that you can get away with 350, um, but you start losing torque really quickly as you try to increase the RPM. If you're new to Christopher's Factory, most of the educational videos that I do, I do because I have problems learning things, and once I figure it out, I like to make videos so that it can be easier for you to learn the things that I'm doing as well. And almost all of the things that I teach are somewhat related to a project that I'm working on currently. And for this one, I needed a more powerful stepper motor than the drivers that I've used before so that I could power this M&M color sorting machine. It's a really fun project that I've been working on for some time now. It actually goes into, I have a larger project that I'm working on, which is an M&M stock ticker, but I needed M&Ms sorted by colors so that I could put them into the stock ticker pre-sorted. So by incorporating the A94, whatever it was, I've already forgot, into this project, it allowed me to raise the M&M sorting per minute from about 30 to about 75. And then once I replace this little servo motor in the front with another stepper motor, another NEMA 17 stepper motor, I think we can get all the way up to quite a ways over 100 M&Ms per minute. So I'm very excited for that. So please don't forget to like this video if it helped you out. I really hope that it did, as well as subscribe if you're interested in seeing the future developments of my stock tickers, M&M sorters, and my other projects that I do. I'm very active on my different social media channels, so please don't hesitate to DM or email me if you have a question with a project or need some help or anything like that. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.